it's been great to have been here. It's been a great meeting thus far. Uh, one as good a one as I can recall being in because they've been sinners praying. Uh, they've been people encouraged and helped along the way. And we are looking forward to the Lord moving again tonight in this service. So good to see everybody, the, our friends from different places. And uh, I think uh, I think it was Brother Ralph Cox uh, was the first person that I ever heard say it. And uh, he said, if I hadn't got saved, he said, I wouldn't have known you good people. That's right, that's right. And that's a good part about being saved. And if I hadn't got saved, I wouldn't have wanted you good people to know me. But that's what the grace of God does. <clears throat> Thank you for the offering, uh, for the place to stay, for the food, and for the fellowship, for the privilege of being here with some of the great men of this day and hour that we're living in. And, man, I have appreciated the preaching. Amen. I used to say uh, I enjoyed that preaching, but there have been a few times I, I really didn't enjoy it. I appreciated it, though. Because it's got where I was living at. Amen. It was things shining the light on some the path. And I've always said, uh, if you're higher than I am, shine a light. I'll come to you. Amen. I've, uh, I went down in the hills of Arkansas uh, probably 30 years ago. And, and uh, they had heard uh, tapes from different places, from the highway and other places. And they had invited us to come down that way. And uh, new work just started. And so we went, and uh, they, uh, they turned out of the hills, and uh, uh, that's the first time I uh, knowed that there was an L uh, ultra homeless people. And I thought homeless people were just homeless people. Yeah. And I said, where did this crowd come from? And the pastor told me, he said, they've come to check you out. Yeah. Well, being the kind and gentle saint that I am, when they turned the service to me, I looked over those congregation and I said, now, if you come to have revival, I said, we can have a move of God. I said, now, if you've come to have a riot, I said, I've been in a few of them. And if you've just come to, to bring your theological inch tape and measure me, I'm going to say now, I hate for you to come so far for so little. But I said, now, look, the Bible's right. Give me a chapter and verse, and the, the fight's over. Amen. That's the Bible is right. Measure the same everywhere. Amen. The gospel is the same everywhere. Had some folks try to tell me that because they was in a certain country somewhere, they had to wear a jewelry to let them know they was married. I said, brother, the Bible's the same everywhere. Amen. And if it's measuring here, it'll measure there. And then I said to them, but, if it's something you've prayed through on and you don't feel like I have, I said, well, don't you try to unchristianize me. I demand the same right. Give me a shot at it. You know what? I don't know what it was that impressed them uh, old mountain men, but we had a revival. I mean, we broke out in a move of God, amen, that uh, uh, made some great friends, you know, so... Uh, but we're so glad to be here tonight. And I, again, I appreciate it the way the Lord has been helping and moving. And, uh, boy, I appreciate the preaching today. I was telling Brother Brent a while ago, I said, uh, I don't know how I missed uh, Brother Joy. I said, I didn't know he existed until this meeting. And uh, I didn't know how I'd missed him, you know. And uh, I tell you what, but something in his preaching this day, today, uh, reminded me of, uh, something way back yonder. And I didn't know if I had anything on it in my, in my briefcase, but uh, I went back into the archives. Amen. Because uh, uh, praying this evening couldn't settle on anything else that maybe somebody was here tonight, as the pastor said. And after all of this move of God, you've not had your touch yet. Well, tonight's your night. Amen. Amen. I want to read tonight from a couple of places. I want to read from 2 Samuel, uh, chapter number 23, the final last words of the King David. And uh, verse number 4, he says uh, about the ruling uh, in fear of God. He said, He shall be like, he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth even 
a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing up out of the earth by the clear shining after rain. And then I want to go over to the book of Genesis. And uh, in the book of Genesis, I want to uh, go to Genesis chapter 41. And uh, let's read verse 50 through 52. Genesis 41. And unto Joseph was born two sons before the years of the famine came, which Asdanath, the daughter of Potharar, priest of Om, bare unto him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God, he said, hath made me forget all my tall and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. I want to preach a little while tonight on the aftermath of the affliction. Father, thank you for this great meeting and for all that's transpired doing it. Lord, for the preaching of the word, but more than that, God, for the, for the harvest on the altars, for the lives that we even testified to last night that are changed, destiny, oh God, turned around. And now, Father, again tonight, I ask that the canopy of your glory settle around this congregation one more time. Sweet Holy Ghost, saturate this place. Amen, like dew on the mown grass. Lord, flow through this place. Let your power be manifested, we pray, one more time on our altars. Hide us in the cross tonight. Make us a divine channel, Lord. Lord, let that anointing that somehow transforms a man and makes him a prophet in the sense of the New Testament be upon me tonight. God, at the conclusion of these remarks tonight, stretch forth your hand, confirm your word, and grant unto us signs and miracles and wonders in the name of Jesus. And the congregation said, David said, after the storm, after the rain, after the trial, a morning would break without any clouds. The enemy told somebody that you might as well just go ahead and give up. You are nobody. You're just standing at the back of the line and nobody would miss you if you were gone. But I come to tell you tonight one more time that the storm that was meant to take you out has only caused the grass to grow and the trees to bear fruit. Amen. And I also want you to know, hang on, son, you're about to get a promotion. You're about to be able to be able to move to the front of the line. Ah, oh, yes, when the storm hits you, it was the intent of the devil, amen, to drive your boat upon the rock and make shipwreck of your faith. But what he didn't recognize was the rock your ship hit was the rock of ages. Hallelujah. I believe it was Vance Havner that said, hey, amen, I've been shipwrecked on faith and I'm stranded on the Isle of Omnipotence. Hallelujah. Glory be to God tonight after the storm after the rain it ain't going to always be like this there's a morning coming and a morning without clouds amen a morning amen when the dew glistens with the glory of God and the power of God amen and you become fruitful again oh hallelujah ah uh, we come to Joseph Everybody knows the story, one of the most grand and glorious stories in the entire Word of God. More like uh, Jesus than any character in the Bible. You know his story. But now when we pick up the narrative, let him breathe on me. Now when we pick up the narrative, he's left the prison, he's in the palace. Amen. He's in those years of tremendous blessing. 
He's in those years of, of the outpouring that he told Pharaoh was going to be the land of plenty. During that time, he has taken him a bride. Ah, uh, yes. And now uh, there comes a day one morning uh, when they walk in to lay in his arms a bundle of life. He looks down at this firstborn son and he said, call his name Manasseh. Amen. For God hath made me to forget. Amen. The hole that was in my heart and the longing for my family. Joseph now looks back, oh glory to God, looks back over the dark night. Amen. And he sees the hand of God through all his afflictions. Oh, what would it have been like if he'd have found his brothers? What would it have been like? Amen. If he'd have never went to the pit nor the prison, how different life might have been. Truly, he said, God has manassed me. He has made me to forget. Amen. I want you to know tonight there is a blessing coming that is so beyond. Amen. The trial you've been going through, you'll look back one of these mornings and you'll be like the, the Jews was when they came back out of captivity. He said, when God turned again our captivity, we were like them. Amen. That woke out of sleep. Hallelujah. Have you ever had a bad dream? Have you ever had a nightmare that troubled you and woke you up in the morning, but as the sun got brighter, amen, and the gay got sweeter, it began to fade away. That's the way it's going to be. I come to tell you tonight, amen, I know you're in the midst of a storm. I know the winds are blowing. I know you can't see him, amen, but I can tell you right now, when you can't touch him, you can still trust him. Oh, how long the night. How many times, how many times has it been repeated in the life of God's people? And I realize some of them are here right here tonight. The desolation of darkness has settled upon the soul. and There seems to be no way of escape. Oh, I wonder how many in this hour we're living in are simply feeling overwhelmed by life. Amen. Amen. One old man I talked to, an old saint of God, a warrior from years gone by. He looked up at me and he said, Brother John, it's just so dark where I am right now. It's the darkest hour I've ever seen. Amen. And in some ways tonight, I understand that. It is a time of testing. It is a time of trial. It is a time that how you've looked at the situation and said there ain't no way it could change. But I'm here to tell you tonight, amen, you think you're, uh, you're the only one it's ever happened to. I want you to understand, if you're in that place tonight, you're not alone. The devil makes you feel like you're the only one and hear that, that nobody understands and nobody cares. But I want you to know tonight you ain't by yourself. In fact, if you're overwhelmed, if you're discouraged, if you're distraught tonight, you are in wonderful company. How many has ever heard of a man called Elijah? If ever there was a man put faith to the test to the limit, Elijah did. If there was a fearless, faithful child of God, it was Elijah. But we know the story. Amen. After that uh, great victory on Carmel, after the girt and his line and running all the way to the city, amen, we find him the next time we find him crawling up under a tree and praying to die. Oh, listen. Amen. It's not so bad to be down. It's not something. Don't be ashamed that you're in the fight tonight. The shame is if you don't get up. Amen. The shame if you die there. Amen. Yeah. There's a valley for everybody. But God, no, yes, we are going through the valley. This, this road leads to the valley. Amen. But the valley is not a place, amen, that you're supposed to build a house and stay at. Amen. We're passing through this time. Amen. This too will pass. Amen. Ah, over the more used to sing, a rose looks gray at midnight. But the flame is just asleep and still is strong because it knew the hammer and the white heat. These things shall pass and life be sweeter. 
I know that you can't uh, feel that right now, but I want you to know if you could feel it, uh, it wouldn't be faith. But I can tell you on the authority of God's Word uh, and the Holy Ghost being the gentleman he is, uh, he's never, ever failed one time to fulfill what he's promised. Oh, yeah. Here we find this great man of God who's been totally obedient, his obedience tested to the limit, a man who can stand before God in unfaltering faith before kings, a man of unquestioned integrity, but of such a man in the darkness falls. After such a great time of stress, there was a sense of weakness and then there was that sense of loneliness. I think probably, this is a commentary according to John. I think probably when the old prophet got to the gate of the city and found nobody waiting and nobody cared. The most dangerous weapon the devil's got against us is loneliness. If you've never, if you've never stood there and realized, Paul said at my first answer, nobody stood with me. If you've never felt that isolation and that loneliness, you might not know what I'm talking about. But I want you to know you ain't the first person that's been there. And in that sense of loneliness, and finally with a weariness in the work, hey man, he turns and goes to that place. Ah, but for Joseph and for Elijah, oh, I felt him breathe on me again. And for the true child of God, there is a Manasseh. This is what I thought today when the preacher was preaching. Hold on a little longer. You are about to give birth, amen, to a Manasseh, to a re-challenging of your dream and a rebirth of your dream. Amen. How many times, no doubt, had the devil screamed, dream on, dreamer boy. Amen. But there came a day when the word of the Lord came down in that prison and brought him out of there and put him in the king's house. Hallelujah. I've come to tell you tonight, hang on just a little longer. Amen. The birth pains are already there. What you're sensing now is just the birth pains of a promise. Ah, and Joseph holds that little boy in his arms and he said, God has manassed me. Amen. He has comforted me. Amen. In all my affliction, he's caused me to forget. I want you to, mm, glory to God, I feel like telling you if you'll hold that promise in your hand just a little longer. Amen. You'll forget about the bitterness and the trial and the hurt and the disappointment of yesterday and God will turn it around again for you. Oh, yes. Brother Philip, when Johnny died and just nearly lost her mind and that's what caused her to have the heart attack. He died on the 23rd of December, we had his funeral right during Christmas. And he was more than her brother. I mean, he, she had raised them boys. She had put them in school. She had clothed them. She had watched over them. Hey, man, there's heirs. Every morning she called him to make sure everything was all right for work. And every night he called her and said, I'm home. And they had such a, and ah, uh, listen, if you if you've, some of you old who can remember maybe when he stood on one side of the pulpit and her on the other and they forgot about everybody being there and they were singing to the glory of God and each other. I mean, heaven would come down. But Johnny died. Unexplainable. No rhyme or reason to it. And one of the things that made... Brother Philip and Ann like this for all those years was one Sunday morning when I'd tried everything I could, Brother Philip, to console her, and she just couldn't quit crying. The phone rang. Brother Philip said, I, Brother Johnny, I ain't nothing. He said, I, I really feel. He said, but God gave me a scripture. It's still marked in that old red Bible. Amen. And he read it to her. Amen. But I told her one day, I said, baby, 
I said, I don't know why it happened like it did. I said, but there'll come a time when you will be able to take those experiences and comfort somebody else. I remember that first time when we came and that young man had died. We went down to the fellowship hall and I missed Stan and the family was gathered around her. There's asking her questions of how you handle this kind of grief, how you go through this and what happened. Hey, man, could I tell you tonight, day, uh, Joseph said, I realize now that God, I couldn't see what was going on. I feel the Holy Ghost. God uh, was manipulating and moving in my circumstances when I couldn't see it. Ah, uh, he told his brethren uh, when the refiner revealed to him, he said, what you meant for evil, God turned it into good. Uh, aren't you glad tonight you're serving a God that can cause the wrath of the ungodly to bring praise unto his name? Oh, hallelujah. You meant it for evil. But God said what you're going through. You feel like you ain't nobody. You feel like you ain't nothing. You feel like nobody ain't got no confidence in you. Hang on. God's watching you. Hey Amen. He puts you in the fire, and he'll keep you there. If you'll stay in the fire till he tempers the sword, he'll make you a weapon in his hand that'll bring glory to his name. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> How many times have the sweet souls of innocence stumbled into the valley of Acorn? Drenched with the bitter tears of the valley, only to find out that God has led them into a land that will turn in to milk and honey. God, God, amen. God will turn your desert into a garden before very long. Psalmist said, Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know what that is? Uh, David was saying, God, uh, you've turned my battle into a banquet. Hey, Amen. It was a battle yesterday, but it's a banquet in the presence of God today. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody, hey, amen, reach up and say, God, I'm going to believe you tonight. Hey, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very place. Hey, amen. Hey, amen. Where was meant for desolation becomes fruitful. Hey Amen. What seemed impossible, hey Amen, yesterday now becomes a great and mighty harvest. God turns the morning into dancing. You're going to shout. You're going to dance. You're going to rejoice. God takes limitation, the limitations, and turns them into singing. They that go forth weeping, bearing that precious seed. You know, when those, when those Israelites came back, those Jews came back to the land after the captivity, they had left a land that was a, a showcase that had been desolated now for 70 years. Rocks and drought and a country without the blessing of God. And all they had was a handful of seeds. And they had to decide. And so the psalmist looked as he saw that old farmer go out there, hey amen, with his little bag of seeds. And he watched him as he went, uh, weeping, weeping, crying. Hey, Amen. He'd take his little drill and make a little hole in that dry ground, uh, drop a couple of seeds in there. Hey, Amen. And then he said the tears would fall. Hey, Amen. The tears would wet. Oh, glory be to God. The tears would wet those seeds. Hey, Amen. You know what? Just keep wetting them. Just keep pouring the tears on them. Hey, Amen. They may look like they're dead and dry and they ain't about to sprout, but I'm fixing to tell you. Hey, Amen. He said they that go forth. Hey, Amen. Weeping, bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again rejoicing and bringing in the sheaves. Hey Amen. There's going to be a move of God. I know it. sometimes it looks dry. I know sometimes I look like I'm spitting in the wind. But I tell you, God's going to have a move of God in this last day. But I'll tell you what, keep throwing your seed out there, evangelist. Hey Amen. Keep casting it out there. Hey Amen. Keep wetting it down with your tears. Hey Amen. One of these days, hey Amen, you're going to wake up to a blooming garden. Hey Amen. The Spirit of God to blow like a river and things are going to be changed. 
Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Lord. Ah. You say, preacher, that's easy for you to say. I hope you understand this. I speak as a fool. I got, literally got up out of the sick bed to come to this meeting. Good friends that meant well said, you, don't, you can't do that. You better not do that. And drove me all the way over here. Week the first night, still not out of it. But I tell you what, I feel better. Amen. You know why I did it? Because since September the 3rd in 1970, amen, one young man came to me and he was met well. He said, I guess you're going to trust the Lord. I said, son, that's the only thing I've ever trusted. Until September the 3rd of 1970, I didn't trust my mom and daddy. I didn't trust anybody. Nobody got inside where I was at. Amen. But I met one. Amen. That was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And I swore allegiance to that king and live, die, sink, or swim. Amen. I'm in for the long haul. Amen. I want to tell you, amen, he's come by when it looked like it was hopeless, when it looked like it was helpless. Some of you know that 12 long years passed after and had that heart attack before she could nearly do anything. Up and down, in and out. Brother Moore called me one morning and said, Brother Gabbard, I went in last night. Amen. That dark in the little church came out at daylight. Said the only thing the Holy Ghost said was, More, it's in my hand. But you know what? I don't know why it was 12 years. I don't know why we battled like we did, Brother Philip. But I know one thing. There came a night when the glory of God stepped in and Anne stepped out and threw her hands up and said, I'm here by the power of God and she was it wasn't long after that uh, amen well the whole night come in amen she was uh, carrying on in the kitchen uh, singing uh, shouting uh, and uh, jerking around uh, with a mop I said baby what are you doing she said I'm mopping the floor glory to God uh, amen uh, just doing things I couldn't do before Oh, tonight, Lord, I need you to manasseh me. Lord, I need that blessing that will comfort me such a doors in the lonely hours. I need that blessing. Amen. That manasseh. Amen. That's the only thing that can fill the void and make me to forget. But you know what? You know what followed that? What followed that was another baby boy. And he said, Call him Ephraim. Fruitful. His name means fruitful. Manasseh made me to forget the times of darkness and affliction. Now Ephraim comes along and there's fruitfulness again. Amen. Your wife didn't end. Amen. You ain't over. It ain't over. There's still some things that we can learn from you. Amen. There's still some fruitful things that you can bear fruit in your old age. The Bible said, amen, you could bear fruit in that old age. Amen. And so I've come to tell you tonight, amen, the aftermath of your affliction is that the Manasseh is born. Turn the time of darkness and affliction Let the dark hour of distress turn into the rich joy of God's continual presence. Teach me that is in my desert that yields the richest song and the purest peace. It was born in that desert. Amen. So I come to tell somebody tonight, I know it's the last night. The devil's told you it was over. I've come to tell you that you've embarked on a journey that you've not yet but again, amen, to know what God's fixing to do. Hallelujah. You don't understand. Amen. You know, you said, but I ain't nothing. You know, after 40 years, my, Moses figured that out. You don't, you're ahead of him. It took him 40 years on the backside of the desert. When he walked up that burning bush in the, in the, the, the pure Greek of hillbilly, what he said was, who, me, God, I ain't nothing. And God said, yeah, I've been waiting for 40 years. You find that out. You ain't nothing. But when you ain't nothing, I'm everything. 
Hallelujah. When you ain't nothing, I'm everything. Amen. And I'll take nothing. And everything will take nothing. And we'll change our whole kingdom. And we'll bring the most mighty powers of the world down on their knees. And we'll bring people, God's people, out one more time. And so I come to tell you tonight, hey man, there's a morning coming. Hey man, you're going to wake up one of these mornings. And all of a sudden, you know, what's the change? Somewhere in America, we were in a meeting. A young lady was there. And I could tell that she wasn't there because she wanted to be. But they were desperate. And she had brought her to church. She'd never been able to have children ever two or three times. Hope would grow. And then there'd be a miscarriage. And the last time it did something to her emotionally. It changed her. But in that meeting that night, the Holy Ghost, as, as the pastor said a while ago, the Holy Ghost just got his eye on her. And he started wooing her. I called her up to the front. I said, now listen, I'm not going to embarrass you for anything in the world. I said, but the devil's telling you nobody cares. That God has put you to the side and he don't even care. I said, but he told me to give you this prayer cloth. And you to keep it with you. And every time the devil comes at you, you pick it up and say, there's a preacher and his wife and they're praying for me. And they said, me that God was going to give me a promise. And I'm going to stand on it. This is her testimony now. She picks the story up. She said, I, we went home that night and said, I just opened the nightstand drawer and dropped that in there. Now, unbeknown to her husband or anybody else in that drawer was the means of her self-destruction. Her plan was as soon as he goes to work, I'm going to swallow this bottle of pills, go back to bed. And I'm getting out of this torment. But she said when she opened that drawer, laid on top of those pills was a red prayer cloth. She said, I picked that prayer cloth up and held it between my fingers and said, I felt something that I hadn't felt in a long, long time. When they were telling me that, they were holding between them a bouncing baby boy. Amen. God had turned it around. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel a sweet Holy Ghost. I want to help somebody tonight. God knows your condition. He knows your case. He knows where you are. Amen. I'd have been content tonight if you'd have shouted it on through. But late this evening there in that room, I knew, hey, amen, there was something else. Hey, amen. And so I've come to tell you tonight, you're going to wake up, and the storm's going to be over. And the rain's going to stop, and the sun's going to shine. And what looked like a burned-over field will bring forth fruit again. Amen. Amen. God is going to turn it around. I don't care how hopeless it is. I want you to hold on to the promise. Little old sister Carter held on for seven years while Ernie was in prison. Nineteen-year-old mama that loved the Lord. Nineteen years old, wild and running out of control. Robbed a bank, locked the folks in the vault. They'd have died there if it had been a modern day vault, but it was a concrete vault. They was able to chip in and get some air. And so he goes to prison for the rest of his young life. No possibility of parole. But you know what that little old woman, less than 100 pounds, do every time she went to church? She'd say, Pray for my boy. God's going to bring him home. God's told me he's going to bring him home. You keep praying. You know what? Seven years went by. and She had done that so much that the saints would drop their head. And you know, I think, poor old sister, poor old thing. She's getting senile. Seven years went by. Never missed a service. Never missed a chance to shout. Never missed a chance to praise God. They were in church. Now, it's got a long, drawn out night. I ain't got the time we're going to pray. But there came a night she was in church, like where she's always been, every night. They were shouting and singing, 
I mean, it's, they've had a great uh, service and great preaching and a great altar, and they're shouting all over the house, and little sister Carter's praying like where she's always prayed. All of a sudden, through the back doors of that church, long, lanky boy come busting through there. And when he did, people looked back, and there, there was a silence started spreading over the church. And he started doing like this. He eased up beside his mama, got down on his knees beside of his mama, put his arm around her. She looked up, and you know what she said? Welcome home, boy. I've been waiting on you. I come to tell you tonight, hey man, the pain you're having right now is just the birth pains of a brand new promise. Hey man, the rebirth of Manasseh. Hey man, you not only are you going to hold Manasseh in your hands, but Ephraim's going to follow and there'll be a time of fruitfulness like you have not known. Take it to the bank. I said it. I'm not afraid to prophesy to you and tell you, hang on. Hey, 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 hey. My God, grab a hold of it and hang on. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost coming in this place. I'm going to shut this down and give you a chance to come on these altars. But I've come to tell you tonight, hey man, hang on to it. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Son, I love you like I love my right arm, and I wouldn't embarrass you for anything in the world. But I'm going to tell you something right now, right here and right now. If you'll hang on to what you've got, you can't imagine what God's fixing to do. Amen. And if when he does that, he'll make you a fruitful bow. Amen. And there'll be folks that's watching. Amen. That'll say, there's hope for me too. I'm going to break out of it. I'm going to change it. That's thus saith the Lord. Somebody give God the praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. God loves to work with nothing. He loves the loser. He loves to fight for the man that's at the back of the line and nobody cares. Amen. I come to tell you tonight, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah to God and the Lamb. Ah, let's stand all over this place. Lift your hands tonight. Give God the glory. Hey, man, you said, preacher, that might work for them, but not for me. No, yes, the, you're the one it's going to work for. Hey, man, you're the one he came after tonight. Hey, man, you're here knocking on your door tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, great God of heaven. Somebody, amen, lay hold on the promise tonight. Walk out those doors. It'll be different. Amen, you know, glory. Amen, it's going to be different. You hear me? Amen. God's going to turn it around. I don't care. It takes seven years. Hang on. Don't let that boy go to hell. And between them and eternity. Amen. Say, sir, I believe God. Amen. I'm going to stand on his promise. He ain't never done me nothing but good. Somebody give us a song tonight. Amen. If you'll dare, I just feel like telling you, if you'll dare to just come out of there, amen, walk up to this front, throw your hands up and say, God, I'm claiming my promise tonight. I'm sick and tired of being where I am. And I'm coming out of it by the grace of God. Amen. Manasseh me, oh Lord. Manasseh me. Ah, come on. Come on. Somebody sing us a song tonight. The altars are open. Manasseh me. I need a Manasseh tonight. I need a Manasseh tonight. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, come on. That's right. Come on. Manasseh.